Hi, I'm Taylor. Welcome to my channel if you haven't seen it before. I live in Southeast Asia and share my experiences and life as an American expat living in Malaysia. I share my day-to-day -day life, what it's like to live in another country, uh, the cost of things, the cost of living, the cost of apartments, the cost of medical, all of that, and the cost of travel and the enjoyment of travel. I often talk a lot about cruising, and which is one of my favorite things. So today I'm going to talk about a little cruise I went on a couple of years ago. And it's on an older ship, and I'm a little partial to older ships. I started cruising in 1998 on the Liebert, which was a small Norwegian cruise line ship at the time, and fell in love with it. And now I've recently celebrated doing my 25th cruise. This cruise was about my 20, 21st, something like that, 21st maybe. So I'm gonna share a little bit about it because the ship is gone and um, I'd like to keep her in my memory and hopefully some of you will remember good times on her too. The ship was the Superstar Libra. The Superstar, well, Star Cruise Lines was is a cruise line based in Southeast Asia, or was. <laughs> And um, they had a bunch of older ships, actually several ships from Norwegian cruise lines. As I've said, I love older cruise ships and ocean liners. And some of the ones I've been on are the Regal Empress, formerly the Olympia from 1952, the Rembrandt, formerly Rotterdam 5 from 1958, the Norway, formerly the France from 1962, and Leisure World, formerly Skyward from 1969. Also as a child, so I don't really remember them, and I wish I could, I have a few pictures somewhere, but I was also, when my family was moving to Europe in the 50s, I sailed on the SS United States and the SS America. So I, I'm a real fan of the older ships. Sadly, they're almost all gone now. Uh, the United States still survives, barely, by a thread, and she's docked, I believe, still in Philadelphia. But I love the old ships, and I'm so glad that I got to go on the few that I did. I love the new ships too, but there's something special about an old ship. I have a close friend who I had been trying to talk to going in a cruise. And so this was a four day cruise that left out of Penang, Malaysia, which is where I lived at the time. And um, we thought it would be fun to just for her to try it out. Now the Superstar Libra started life as the seaward for Norwegian cruise lines. She was built in 1988 and was 42,000 something gross registered tons, which is this gross registered tons um, it describes the amount of interior space in a ship. It has nothing to do with how much it weighs because of course they weighs way more than 42,000 tons. The, just to compare it to cruise ships today, I mean, it would be considered a tiny ship in t by today's standards. At the time it was average. So today to compare it, I'll compare it to the last ship I was on, which is spectrum of the seas, which is something like 168,000 tons, something like that. And so that is literally four times the size. And you can feel the difference. For one thing, you don't have to walk for miles on a 42,000 ton ship to get around. Like I said, she was originally seaward for Norwegian Cruise Line, but in 1997, the name was changed to Norwegian Sea as Norwegian was changing all their names to Norwegian Sky, Norwegian Sun, Norwegian Sea, things like that. And in 2005, she was transferred to Star Cruise Lines, based out of Hong Kong, um, renamed Superstar Libra. After leaving service in 2018, she was used in Germany, I believe, as a housing for shipbuilders on Genting, who was the, the owner of Star Cruise Lines. And housing for their workers that were building their new ships. Sadly, in 2022, 
they no longer felt they needed her and she, and because of the pandemic and everything and everybody was getting rid of older ships, she was sold for scrap and demolished in Turkey. Superstar Libra had 10 decks and carried 1,480 passengers. We decided to go on this little cruise. Um, it was interesting because it was just a four-night cruise, but uh, they were doing something at the time, which I believe the Mediterranean Shipping Cruises, or MSC, has been doing for a while in the Mediterranean, where you don't have a beginning or an end to the cruise. Um, you, it goes to several different ports, and passengers can get on or get off at each of those ports. So this cruise went from, you got on in Penang, where we lived, and then it went to Port Klang, which is a, um, the closest port to Kuala Lumpur. And then it went to Phuket, Thailand, and then back to Penang. So people could get on in any of those spots. And I actually think it's sort of a, a neat way to do it because you don't have this mob scene of, at any port, at any one port of everybody getting off the ship and everybody getting off the ship. So I think it's a great idea and I think more cruise lines should do that now. She had one little claim to fame in the 2003 film, Too Fast, Too Furious which I must admit I haven't seen, but I probably will try to look it up now. I try to watch any, any movie that has cruise ships in it. So, my friend Jill and I got on in Penang, which was, I think it had a sort of evening sailing. So we got on and we had just purchased inside cabins because it was very inexpensive and she didn't want to spend a lot of money on her first cruise. So. We, each, we were able to afford separate cabins because it was really inexpensive. So we went and checked out our cabins and they are tiny little cabins. I've absolutely the smallest cabin I've ever had, but for a four night cruise, it was just fine and we enjoyed it. They did have two beds that could not be put together, I don't think. So I don't know what they, back in the day, I guess you couldn't opt for having your beds put together or separated, it was just separated if you were in that kind of accommodation. We toured the ship, we enjoyed seeing everything, and she was just amazed. She thought it seemed huge, of course. Any, anyone that's a first time cruiser thinks any, their first ship is huge. Now some days, nowadays, they literally are huge, but it's still a 42,000 ton ship, still felt huge to her. It had a beautiful pool deck, um, a nice area in the back that overlooked the wake, so a lounge there. Um, not like the ships today, there wasn't any grand atrium or anything, but it did have a two-story uh, reception area, I guess. And a couple of different restaurants and your, your typical buffet. And, you know, just like the cruise ships today, pretty much disco, karaoke, all of that. But we got settled and uh, went to the dinner the first night where the food was excellent much better than I expected. So we enjoyed that. And I think I did a little karaoke that night. And of course we were drinking quite a bit. The drinks were really well priced. Let's put it that way. So we didn't hold back. The next day we spent time by the pool and it was real fun because they had a, a film crew there that was filming an Indian film. They did tell us the name of it at the time, but we don't remember. And it's, I don't know if the movie was ever made, but it would be fun if we, could find that and see that movie because we might be in the background for all I know. So, but that was that was just sort of fun extra thing to have them filming. But it was not a not really full cruise, so it was easy for them to film around the pool and stuff. That's where we saw them filming. We went to lunch the second day in the main dining room because the it was just nicer than the buffet with tablecloths and everything and nicer service and I thought a nicer selection of food. And we were sitting there and the hostess came by to the table and she said, would you all like to sit at the captain's table tonight? Well, I was like, yes. Jill was like, no, but I overruled her because at that point I'd been on 20 or so cruises and I had never been invited to the captain's table. I was with a, a woman that was close to my age and so I guess they thought we were a nice couple. Well, they probably wanted English speakers to be able to speak to the ship's officers at dinner. 
so we were all excited about it and well I was Jill was just nervous about it but we went it's just a table for six it wasn't the captain but it was two of the um, high-ranking officers from the ship they were nice they were both I think from Sweden or Norway or something like that that part of the world Scandinavian anyway what we loved was sitting at the table like that that you get free flow wine and they were not skimping with that so that was just really special and they're all wearing their white uniforms um, and it was fun we had a nice chat with them the other two people at the table were the yoga instructor from the cruise who's from KL or Kuala Lumpur and um, her daughter so we had a great time with that it was really fun a couple of the really fun things about this little cruise was they had a yoga instructor the one that went ate at the captain table with us and I don't think that had anything to do with us getting invited. But Jill, my friend Jill, is an avid follower of yoga. Been doing it most of her life, I think. And she loved that. They did it by the pool. There was, it was fairly well attended. I think, you know, 12, 15 people, which is a lot for the size of the ship it was. And she loved that every day out there doing her stretches and with the beautiful sun and as we sailed along, it was absolutely gorgeous and she loved it. The ship also had evening parties up on the outside deck by the pool where we were dancing and I have a cute video here of Jill dancing, which she'll think, kill me for putting on here, but too bad Jill, sorry. I hope you don't mind. And in Phuket, it's just parked in the, or dock, not docked or parked, it anchored in the harbor and where the, you have this beautiful panoramic view of Phuket all around you, the water, the beautiful green waters, hills and mountains and the incredible resorts. It was just really special. We didn't get off the ship there either um, as we both been to Phuket before. And for me, it's always about the ship. It's very rarely about the destination. So we enjoyed the day in Phuket, and then all too quickly we were back in Penang. But Jill was hooked. She is hooked. So she's gone on two other cruises with me since then, and she would have done more except for the pandemic and how everything was shut down. But now she's ready to get going again, and I'm looking forward to sailing with her some more. I hope you've enjoyed this little history of an older ship of Superstar Libra, uh, a ship that we really enjoyed. And we're really sorry that it's gone, but it's sort of nice to look back and see, see how it was, how cruising was back in the day. Here's several pictures of how the ship looks. There, I have pictures of the um, entry, the dining room, um, several different cabin types, and just some pictures of us enjoying the cruise. But I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane for me, and we'll come back to see other videos that I'm planning to do on other cruises, and just getting to know me and my everyday life. Like always, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.